it's your boy d rich back at it once again and as you can see i'm back in my very very top notch secret location paul george behind me the king lebron james behind me and i also have the easy boost boxes behind me as usual now today before i get started what i need you to do is subscribe hit the like button because you already know the video is going to be fire also follow me on instagram and snapchat at d rich tv now this past weekend we had one of the most anticipated matchups in basketball history in amateur basketball history the last matchup that i remember being this much anticipated was zion williamson versus Lamelo ball and that was i believe in vegas like three years ago it was crazy imani bates versus lebron james jr will go down in history as one of the most anticipated amateur basketball games i watched the game via highlights on youtube I was not able to make it to Indianapolis, but you better believe I was watching it on YouTube and I also watched it on someone's Instagram live. It was a little bit blurry, but I just wanted to get a feel for the atmosphere and I got to see what I wanted to see, which was Imani Bates versus LeBron James Jr. LeBron was in the building, which is to our benefit and his benefit also because he gets to see his son compete on the EYBL circuit for the first time as an eighth grader and we got to see LeBron at the Nike EYBL for I believe the first time because every year he's in the NBA finals this year the Lakers unfortunately did not make it to the playoffs so he gets some time to let his body heal and also watch his son break out of his shell because anybody who's been watching LeBron Jr. for the past four to five years always said once he gets the confidence it's over with and me personally one thing that I see from this young man from when he first started to now is the confidence because the skill set was there he has natural ability I mean he he does some stuff on the basketball court where it's not teachable some of the passes that he makes some of the moves that just come natural he has that and his confidence is getting to where it needs to be because to me that was the only thing that was holding him back slightly. And now he's breaking out of that shell. And anybody who disagrees is just a hater because I see this kid getting better and better. He's in the gym. I've seen a video with him in the gym, grinding, working hard with Gilbert Arenas out there in LA. He's working on his game, polishing up some of the things that he needed to work on. But by far, his confidence is getting to where it needs to be. And that, that was the only knock that anybody ever had on him was he got to break out of that shell, but imagine being a kid of his caliber and having to play in front of thousands of people, no matter where he go, no matter where he go, it's a crowd. It's a sold out crowd, sold out people coming to see him play. They filling up high school gyms all across the country. Imagine playing under that spotlight and having that much scrutiny on you as a 10, 11, 12 year old. Now I think he's 13. Imagine having that. I don't think too many kids could play the way that he played under that type of spotlight. I'm just being honest. And now him coming out of his shell, they're on the EYBL. And before I talk about this matchup in depth, I know people are going to say strive for greatness is a loaded team. And you're right. Strive for greatness is pretty much loaded, but I feel like in this day and time, you have to have a loaded team to be able to compete with the big dogs because everybody going to pick up who they need to pick up to dominate, to make it to Pete Jam. So if you want to compete, you got to get the pieces to compete. Dior Johnson was a great pickup for Strive for Greatness. He ran with the Oakland Soldiers, played with Jalen Green. He's from New York. He has that grittiness. They also had a kid from Shadow Mountain. What's his name? What's his name? It'll come to me. It'll come to me. They got a kid from Shadow Mountain. They got the Kohler kid, the Jackson Kohler. I hope I'm saying his name correctly. Some of the best footwork in the game. Some of the best footwork in the game. I saw this kid play at the Under Armour Combine in Los Angeles last year. And I'm talking about his footwork is, is just crazy. They also have Sky Clark. 
And Sky Clark is slept on, but I feel like he's going to wake a lot of people up because to me, he's definitely a good player in the class of 2022. He wasn't in the ESPN top 25 rankings. I didn't agree with those rankings. I I, I, I should have made a video for the ESPN top 25 2022 basketball rankings because there's a few of those rankings that are pretty shaky. But he wasn't in those rankings. I feel like he's out, he's hungry, and he wants to show people that he's he's a slept-on player in the class of 2022. They also have a kid named Sada. Sada, what's his name? Let me see. ESPN 2022 basketball rankings. They also have a kid from that lives in Arizona right now. <clears throat> About six, about six, seven. Uh, they have a they have a good team. They have a good team. The addition of Dior Johnson is going to take that team to a new level, to a new level. And people may say, you know, they they picking up players, they doing this, they trying to hide Bronny. Listen, if you do not have a loaded team around LeBron James Jr., you're doing yourself a disservice because his IQ requires a certain type of player because some of the passes that he makes, you got to have a certain type of caliber player to catch the passes and, and and to finish the basket. Because one thing that I got tired of was when he would make a hell of a pass and then somebody would miss the damn shot or, or, or they won't see the pass coming and, and they go out of bounds because they don't have the IQ that matches his. So I'm glad to see that they're surrounding him with the pieces that not only he needs, but their team needs to be successful, okay? Now, let's talk about Imani Bates, okay? Everybody knows that Imani Bates is going to be the number one pick in the 2022 NBA draft. Everybody knows that. Let's get that out the way. I think it's safe to say that he will be one of the most sought-after prospects since LeBron James. And he's living up to the hype. He had 43 points. Somebody said he had 45 points against Strive for Greatness. He had, he had over 40. And some of the shots that he was making was like, it's NBA type shit. You know, it's, it's, it's just certain shit you can't teach. And a lot of people will say, why is Imani Bates playing 15U? Well, let D. Rich give you the real answer on why Imani Bates is playing 15U. Okay, this is D-Rich. I'm, I'm going to keep it real with you. Imani Bates is not playing 15U because he can't play 17U. Imani Bates is playing 15U because some of his teammates aren't ready to play 15U. And one thing about him is he's not a me, me, me type of person. He's a we type of person. Okay? And that's not a knock against none of his teammates. Okay? They played 15U last year as eighth graders. Okay, and now they're playing their correct age, and some of those guys aren't ready to play 17U. And most of the players on that team are a core group of guys that they've had for the past three years. Okay, and they're not switching things up just to make it to Pete Jam, and I respect them for that. Do I agree with it? Not necessarily, because I feel like sometimes you have to switch things up, but I do respect the loyalty because loyalty is something that you really don't get. In this game, there's so many kids hopping from team to team. It's kind of good for me to see that the core players on Bates Fundamentals are sticking together for the long run. And Imani Bates also trusts the process. He knows I just won a state championship for the first time at Ypsilanti Lincoln, that their first state championship in school history. I'm trusting the process. I'm going to play 15U, possibly 16U, then 17U. Then I'm going to go to the fucking league and get paid. Trust the process. It's been working this far, okay? And he's sticking with his brothers, okay? Loyalty is something that you don't see too much in this AAU basketball game. I'm just being real. Now, Strive for Greatness ended up winning the game by 20 points. And I don't know if they qualify for Pete Jam. I hope they did because I would love to see this team at Pete Jam. Honestly, I've never been to an EYBL basketball session, but D-Rich needs to get to one. I need to get to an EYBL basketball session. I need to get there. I need to get to Dallas, and I definitely need to get to the Pete Jam. I haven't saw the atmosphere. I only see what I see on camera. 
but I need to get there. Okay. Strive for greatness ended up winning the game by 20. And the kid Jackson, I think he was the MVP of the game because that footwork, you got to check the kid out, man. He's a motor getting rebounds. I'm trying to figure out the kid's name. That's in Arizona. <sighs> man. Damn. It's crazy how that name slipped my mind. If anybody. Let me see here if I can find his name. But it was a. It was it was a it was a good game to me. Even though base fundamentals lost by twenty points, I still think it was a good game because people got to see what Imani Bates is all about. People got to see the progression of LeBron James Jr. His confidence, the fadeaway shot that he hit. People got to see Dior Johnson. People may say things about him having tattoos and stuff, but hell, we all got tattoos. I got tattoos. If I was a kid his age. Nowadays, I probably have a tattoo, too. I like his grittiness. I like his finesse. And I love his confidence. People got to see that Sky Clark is slept on. We got to see everything that we needed to see. We got to see it. Okay? I think LeBron James was happy with the way his team came out and played. Because let's keep it real. Strive for greatness. It's his program. And I'm happy to see that they're on the EYBO circuit. I'm glad to see that they made the jump to the EYBO circuit this year. People keep asking me about the North Coast Blue Chips, if they still have a team. I think they do. I'm not the guy to ask about that. Don't ask me. You have to hit up somebody else and ask them about information about the North Coast Blue Chips because I don't necessarily know. All I know is that that was a hell of a matchup this past weekend. I'm about to find out these kids' names, man. Jesus Christ. Hold on. Let me see. Let me see. I can't find it. I can't find it. Anyways, I just wanted to get get on here and talk about the matchup between Imani Bates and LeBron James Jr. Strive for greatness. Versus base fundamentals. Listen, base fundamentals is gonna be all right. They're gonna be all right. They're gonna make it to P Jam. Strive for greatness. We'll make it to P Jam, hopefully. And we'll see this matchup again. We'll see this matchup again. It was a crazy atmosphere. And if they play again at P Jam or wherever they compete at again in the future, it's gonna be crazy because this is a matchup that I'm pretty sure Nike will have for the next three years. And it might be a matchup that we see in the NBA someday, all right? But comment what you thought about the basketball game. I thought it was a good game, man. Um, I'm happy the matchup happened. I just had to get on here and talk about it. I'm pretty pissed I wasn't able to be there, but, hey, things happen. Shout out to my dude, Tupac. Rest in peace. And everybody out there, stay focused. Keep grinding. Follow me on Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter, at TV. Hopefully you like videos like this because, like I said, this is something that I love to do. It's my passion. I can talk all day, put me in front of my, uh, in front of a mic. I can do this. All right. So, yeah, I'm out of here, man. I'm about to chill and watch Netflix or read a book. Maybe I should read a book because I haven't been doing that in a while. But D Rich TV, man, I'm out of here.